Weiss. I work here at the Regional Arts Commission, and they pulled me in here and said I should welcome you all. So I'm really happy to be welcome you, welcoming you all on this wonderful occasion in which we're going to be honoring Michael Castro as the Poet Laureate of St. Louis. So thank you very much for being here. So I also have the pleasure. Oops. We're going to have fun. Okay. How are we doing, like that? Yeah, we're good. good. Um, I also have the pleasure of introducing the president of the Board of Aldermen for the city of St. Louis, Louis Reed. First time. I tell you what. Let's give a round of applause to the Regional Arts Commission for opening up and helping host us today. I know Aaron is here somewhere, he's not feeling well, but Aaron, could you stand or raise your hand or whatever so we can give you a round of applause? Because when Aaron brought this to us a year or so ago, it was very good. Yeah, he's over here. Well, there he is. Let's give him a big round of applause. Because I don't know how many of you have ever been on the receiving end of something Aaron really wanted. But man, when he came to City Hall and began to push this idea of a poet laureate, he would not stop. You guys got my mic on. He he absolutely would not stop, and uh, I'm glad he did not. And I am so honored that we were able to pass the ordinance and get everybody on board so that we can get we can bring on board the first poet laureate for the city of St. Louis and for our region. And we got lucky and got one of the good ones. So let's give Michael Castro a big round of applause. <laughs> and just one more word about what that means. When you think about the current times that we're under right now, you think about what happened in the Mike Brown uh, shooting, you think about uh, uh, you know, Riverview and Shaw and some of these things that have happened across the United States. St. Louis is ground zero. St. Louis, we will define this. St. Louis, we are going to have to lead the change that the nation is going to take up. And it's going to start here. A poet laureate is going to play an important role in that. And that's why it's so key to have somebody great. It's so key to have somebody with Michael Castro's background, not just in what he writes and his experience and his education, but his life's experience, because all of those things will be brought to bear to capture these current times and reshape them and help us define who we are moving into the future. So again, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you so much for taking part in this celebration. Michael Castro, the first poet laureate of the city of St. Louis and the region. Let's give him one more round of applause. How this really came about, and it came about before August. It actually came about in April when. Um, the seventh grade poetry foundation had its event and uh, one of our winning students had come up to me and her name is DeJour Blackman and she was with the Academy of Environmental Science and Mathematics and is now with Hazelwood North West Middle School and DeJour Blackman is with us today and I'd like her to be recognized because she had asked me, uh, and, and she had basically made a statement that she wished she could have studied poetry uh, forever, that she loved writing poetry. And I had mentioned to her, is this working okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I had mentioned to her, uh, or she had mentioned to me, uh, or I mentioned to her, the cold's kind of kicking in here, uh, I said, were you aware that you could go to college and study poetry? 
and educators have this moment that they wait for, sometimes years, even decades, when they see a student's face and really an entire body change, and they see a goal. And du jour showed that to me at that moment, that I said, yes, you can go to college and study poetry writing. And it dawned to me that moment that that was the real reason that we needed to have a poet laureate in our community, our poet as a role model for young people, for all people in our community. And that's really where this started. Du jour, I'd really like you to stand up right now and be recognized for inspiring this to happen. So much of what we had heard in August was that people are not hearing what young people have to say. And as Martin Luther had said, if you want to change the world, just pick up a pen and write. DeJure Blackman picked up her pen, and, there, and what is happening here today is really a result of hearing what people have to say when they do have a pen in their hand. I want to thank you all for coming here and supporting this historic moment for our community, and what a wonderful poet laureate we now have to lead. Thank you. So how do we celebrate a poet with other poets? Yeah. And with other readers? So we have two very distinguished poets in the audience today. Ms. Shirley LaFleur and Mr. Eugene Redman. And they're going to uh, share some poetry in honor of Michael today. So Shirley, can I bring you up here? Ms. Shirley LaFleur. celebration of not only one of my best friends, but one of my best co-partners in poetry. And um, so I'm very proud to be here in honor of him. And I'd like to do a short piece for him. And in honor of this ending of January, I'd like to go out and give an honor to Dr. Martin Luther King. So this is for Michael. It's called Michael Poet. A soft flow where the poet goes. Word walking the stones and bones. A breath of fresh soul. Ear earth sonic tones. Tongue rolling the thunder. Licking the sun. Vision unfolds the scrolls in bold letters. A soft flow where the poet goes where doves don't cry, where love can't lie, and wars have no stars, and truth bears no scars, where so strong the light inside can't be denied, word walking, raw, silk feet, wading the waters, swimming in a world, word pool of eyes. And this is in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. He collected the eyes. Eyes snatched from between the legs of his ancestors. Eyes that floated on the water, sun struck gold as yams, turned bloody. Eyes that fell into the dust, eyes that hung from naked trees in the hush. He collected the eyes, eyes with promise in an unpromised land, eyes pregnant with dreams and hopes, 
strung them like gospel pearls around his waist. He collected the eyes, eyes of his ancestors, the never to die eyes. Yes, he saw the rapture beyond the rupture, beyond the great divide and still cobalt eyes that lit up scarlet flames under purple skies and burned the backs of the sons and daughters of the Delta, beyond the licorice laments in the hush. He saw the rapture beyond the rupture, beyond the back of the bus and the Mississippi in the Mississippi mud, Birmingham jails, little girls smoke charred ribbons in the sky, screaming, screaming, squeezing the water out of the mother, mother's wet heart or father would hurt swollen too big for his mouth. Yes, he saw the rupture, the rapture beyond the rupture. He saw beyond the cotton seed and the sharecropping and the shacks and concrete, streets and marches and Cicero and Salmon, hellhounds and big bull with hog mouth jaws and water holes. Yes, he saw the rapture beyond the rapture. He saw the mountain where the spirits gathered and lips that dripped with prayers circling the universe and saints knitting hands showing him a new land and visions that talked back to God. Oh, he saw the rapture beyond the rapture, beyond the bullet. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Speaking of poetry and language, and my, my mentor, who taught me uh, old English and other things at uh, at Wash U. In those days, uh, how would we call it? Wash out. <laughs> uh, Carter Rivard is here. Wonderful poet friends, uh, Kay Curtis Lyle, <laughs> and others. I'm just uh, looking and seeing a few people. There are a lot of wonderful poets in the room. John Samuel Tiemann, um, and <laughs> Roscoe Crenshaw, <clears throat> who moonlights as a photographer. Oh, my classmate, Thank, thanks. <coughs> thanks, uh, Poet Laureate, for reminding me. My classmate at Wash, at Wash U, uh, Howard Swartz. <laughs> and Howard was on an editorial team uh, that brought out something called Tambourine. And this is Howard now as a student. And some of the people in that publication included Marianne Moore and Tennessee Williams. This is the mid-60s. So they're here. People are whispering like my baby girl, poet and professor. <laughs> The, um, I'm going to do three points. <clears throat> there was a Lit in the Lou festival back in October. Um, and uh, I did something and put some photographs with it. Porting with friends at Lit in the Lou. The Dumas Twain Castro River 
splits, unites Delmar's heart of poetry at Chuck's Duck Room on Blueberry Hill. <laughs> Michael hosts High Grain Voices, soul lit ore that surely plants for trumpet man Floyd LaFleur. Like rivers and poetries, tongues rise and roar over Harlem, Dunhamville, and Planet Ferguson Shore. The first time, thank you. <laughs> the first time I left St. Louis, uh, East St. Louis, St. Louis, <coughs> for an extended um, trip, courtesy of the Marines. Uh, it was 1958, and this is about the longest trip, the first uh, long, long trip that I took, which took me into Southeast Asia and back home. Sea changes, recalling 1958, 1960, He's a deep sea diver with a stroke that can't go wrong. Bessie Smith, Empty Bed Blues. Mariners in waiting, we swam Midwestern mid-century scapes between deceptively glossy seas. Ethiopian Cum Atlantic behind us and Calypia's restive Pacific ahead. Just cocky recruits sparring with fear and trailing the first middle passengers by several generations. We were released from the holes of grave deep swimming holes, many seas, lush luster lakes, and brown breasted river towns ripe with barges, railroads, and slaughterhouses chugging, clacking, and belching blues. We stroked far west en route to far east, past oval, horseshoe, and snake-shaped water bodies, cloud-shot mountains, dizzy deserts, and Vegas oasis, beautiful and ominous canyons grand as oceans of produce, before boot camping on banks of a mythic San Diego Sea, just above the Sea of Cortez, becoming licitly lethal infant trees, bayonet-bearing grunts and simplified doo-woppers, cooks and snipers, cryptographers and compasses and pathfinders, helicopters, and vessels crews ready to crisscross claustrophobic wide openness. Philippine Sea, Formosan Strait, Sea of Japan, South China Sea, and endless shadows wading through shallow water rice forms. Buoyed by the Golden Dragon's domain at the 180th meridian, we underlaid it, underlaid it in the embrace of a sea-wide hammock, a lovely, deadly, sweet, sweet, silently bleeding blue, where I wrote love letters to six sibling si sisters and mermaids back home in East St. Lewis Toodle Oo. <laughs> That's uh, Duke Ellington, 1926. Those who are interested, East St. Louis Toodle Oo. This one is for a um, for a St. Louis born and partially bred poet whom we lost um, a May. Uh, May 29th of this last year. Uh, Maya Angelou and I met in 1970, although we've seen each other 
here and there, but it was in 1970 that she said to me, Eugene, be my brother forever. And you knew there were three things you did if you uh, were, if you spent any time with Maya. You had to become a raconteur, tell some lies with her. You had to have some of her food, and you had to take a drink. Preferably alcohol, but orange juice or lemonade would do, except it might earn you a sneer. <laughs> Maya's Kitchen, homage to Sister Cook. Maya's cooking again, and we, Epicurious Old Salts, and newly seasoned, uh, newly wrought, voyage through her kitchens as words roasting like turkey on her tongue roll over under lips of her oven and feed our famished minds with loaves of poetry, purple onion rings of biography, tart salads of song, and yeasty yields of drama. As we sample baklava and a sheaf of guansabas, hair rises and struts on the back of our heads, like Arkansas corn stalking Arkansas sky. And in, in our echo culinary ecstasy, we curve like freight trains around some bend, bending and blending, a howler's moan into an unending tome of grace, funk, and glory, into ever farthest jazzgasm. Spitting out years like a backfiring tea model, trading a Rolls Royce like Tobacco Road traded for Valley Road. And I'm going to jump over some ports and short stacks of tall tales from flat irons that wail. Saucy sermons from preheated prayers, RSVs from respect blade airs, corn palm trip titch from a coal burning rack. Smothered blues from a delta skillet black. Loosing lyrics from a rope of bratwurst. Sunified similes for a cool water thirst. Shish kebabs of ballads from a skewer's rod. Second line dirges from a first line god. Spicy proverbs from a rush of pepper soup. Folk talk from a high stalk of fresh green dew. Maya's cooking tonight, proofs and metaphors we pluck from tunnels and heights to big anthems and epics for familistic rites. Under strobes and fresnels made of stars and scars, we strutted kitchen stages with the mean and cream of cool of soul cuisine, churning nouns into verbs, she said, with sister and brother each other. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I have the honor of bringing on the poet Lariat. <laughs> <laughs> the poet Lariat play with that word, uh, that phrase. Um, Michael Castro, whom I met in 1963 when a high school classmate of mine took me to his home uh, in New City. Um, has no equal in this country or in this world, as far as I know, in his service to poetry and poets. Often uh, question uh, Michael's ability to uh, come to a reading when he's been called that morning. And wherever there is poetry, wherever there is a poetry audience, wherever poetry grow or potentially can grow you'll find Michael Castro. St. Louis's first poet laureate.
being here. Um, in answer to Eugene's comment, I've always gone by something I'm not sure if it was in the Analects of Confucius or in a fortune cookie, but it said, <laughs> never read your poetry unasked. If asked, never refuse. <laughs> so uh, I have a lot of people to thank. I've tried not to take up too much time at the mic so we can enjoy each other uh, more. <laughs> but I want to thank the aldermanic president, Lewis Reed, uh, and the Bold Board of Aldermen, and Aaron Williams for creating the Poet Laureate position, and through it, saying to the world that culture and the arts are an important part of the fabric of life in St. Louis, and make it a great place to be. And to thank the task force uh, that they assigned, who chose me from among really many worthy candidates to represent the poetry communities in this city and region. And thanks to the many poets, musicians, visual and performance artists I've had the opportunity to work with and play with and interact with over the almost five decades I've been here in St. Louis, many of them in this room, a couple of them you've just heard, uh, your creative energy has fed and nourished mine. You know, scanning the room, I just want to add some uh, to the wonderful artists that should be recognized in this room. I'm going to scan the room and I'll probably miss somebody, but, and so my apologies in advance. But on this wall we have Paul Thiel over here, a poet and prose writer. Uh, I saw Maria Ballog back there in the corner. Lenny Smith is over here, great Soulard poet, Soulard Culture Squad original. Harry Sky Campbell has made it here, legendary poet. First slam champ of St. Louis warrior poet, Harry Sky Campbell. Dwight Bittercoffer I saw back there, wave Dwight. Chris Mullen, who's been at it a long time. And uh, I'd like to also recognize a couple of the young poets who are coming up uh, and worth your attention now and in coming years. Shiraz Gorman over here. is over here. <laughs> Phil Gunas is somewhere in the house. There he is. Harper Barnes I saw before. There he is. And if I missed anyone, I apologize. Kevin McCameron. There he is. A couple of the great presenters, Anne Hobrick of Literature for the Halibut and so many poetry programs, Nancy Hughes of the, of the Poetry Center, Linda Jo Smith of the Library, a poet in her own right. Steve Schreiner is somewhere in the house. Danny Spell is here. Danny Spell. There he is. My brother, Danny Spell and I go back to my first days in St. Louis. We didn't have open mics in those days. A bunch of us young poets met almost nightly in Danny Spell's apartment, sharing our work and work that was turning us on. 
That was my graduate education supplementing Washington University. Danny Spell. David A.N. Jackson is somewhere there. Wow. Um, poetry is a foundational art, which is why I associate the position with the arts themselves. The word is de derived from the Greek poesia, meaning to make or to create. Aristotle's classic work, The Poetics, was about drama, but the drama included poetry, music, dance. Poetry re precedes, actually, the written word. In its pre-literate forms in oral cultures, it was combined in ritual situations to support people's spiritual needs, to heal, and to influence the world in positive ways. These functions still apply today. As Poet Laureate, I'll do everything and anything I can to promote them. So thank you again for this, this great honor. Also want to shout out to David Black, who's been playing his great guitar in the corner. Okay, um, I'm just going to do two pieces. And the first one, I'd like to, you know, my, people who know me know I've done a lot of performance with musicians over the years, really since the first days I was a poet when I barely had any poems to work with. Uh, and I want to ask two musicians, uh, two of St. Louis's really terrific musicians, Tracy Andriotti and Henry Claude, to join me. <laughs> on this uh, piece that I'll do to also for Dr. Martin Luther King, whose words, whose life, his very being, made our wor world a better place and inspired so many of us. It's called Freedom Ring for Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. King, Dr. King, when did you hear freedom ring? When the bloodhounds growled and wailed? When sheriffs locked you up in jail? When you sat up front in a bus? when you overcame for us. Dr. King, Dr. King, when did you hear freedom ring? When the tap clicked on your phone, When you prayed at night alone. When a child returned your smile. When you walked the extra mile. Dr. King, Dr. King. 
When did you hear freedom ring? With civil rights writ into law, with clansmen pounding at the door, when you won the Nobel Prize. When you looked into deep, dark eyes, Dr. King, Dr. King, when did you hear freedom ring? When you lunched with congressmen, when you marched with garbage men, when your dream lit up the night, when your soul beamed in the light, Dr. King, Dr. King, when did you hear freedom ring? When you climbed the mountain high, when the bullet let you die, When your spirit rose to speak, when you turned the other cheek, Dr. King, Dr. King, when did you hear freedom? Dr. King, Dr. King, when will we hear freedom ring? Tracy Ancarati, Henry Clark. I see Greg Mills and Fred Tompkins, two musicians who work with poets all the time and are great in their own right. David Parker. David Parker. David Scott Parker is here. Jay is here. Jay Zelenka is here somewhere. Another one of my oldest friends. Great musician. One of the Peace Eye Poets, the group that I started with. Well, one of the requirements of the Poet Laureate position was to write a poem related to the 250th birthday of St. Louis. So ever since I uh, found out I had been appointed, I've been working on this piece, and I, I'm uh, going to lay it on you right now. <laughs> it's called Re Colon birthday, St. Louis 250. <laughs> Mississippians lived here, Cahokians, built largest city north of Tenochtitlans, traded with peoples of the Great Lakes, Rocky Mounts, Atlantic Coast, Mexico, and more left mysterious mounds and powerful spirit in the earth around our shore. 
Osage, Ponca, Omaha, Kawpaw, and Paw, all came, moved in, moved on, often in tears. Native Americans here by the banks of the great river, great spirit a thousand years. 250 years since most recent humans gathered new as Neo-Mississippians, that is, St. Louis. Trappers and traders remade us as a center and reopened the gateway for others to enter. Peoples descended from river folk, Congo, Yangtze, Loire, Rhine, Tigris, and Indus, great human rivers pouring and trickling into St. Louis. From every land, from every nation, from mountain, deserts, prairie, and plain, some supplied and moved on while many remained. Sensing a spirit by the great river's shore, a power spot, a place to stay and be reborn. Europeans, Africans, Asians, Americans all responding to the river's call. St. Louis, Mound City, River City, city of baseball, blues, and beer, an iconic American city established here. Still a youngster on the millennial scale, new when measured on the Mississippian timeline. Will our best days lie ahead as we enter our prime? I too was reborn here picked up on a spirit in the air at a time when people made statements with their hair. <laughs> Creeley, Ginsburg, Redmond, LaFleur opened up wide my poetry door. Snyder administered the Bodhisattva vow to use words to bring light to the eternal now where everyone suffers as the great Buddha teaches. And love is the answer, as sweet Jesus preaches. We live by the heartbeat. The great river, North America's pulse, throbs in us, in our bustling business, our blood, our spirit, flows into our music that animates the world. The river's timeless depths inform and challenge. Its dynamic oneness models our future. In the past, our daughters and sons have pioneered new directions. Mr. Handy, Miles Davis, Chuck Berry, Scott Joplin opened the world's ears to musical innovation infused with the river's vital vibration. T.S. Eliot, Tennessee Williams, William Burroughs, Kate Chopin, and Maya Angelou traveled with the river's spirit, liberating writing with fresh language and points of view. Henry Shaw and Barry Commoner picked up the current from the depths of the river and embraced nature's healing and energy potential, seeding a healthy future which now is essential. Masters and Johnson stripped our denial bare, laid us naked as the river to make us more self-accepting, self-aware. Our smarts and arts have represented us well. Soul-bearing writers, music for the world to move to, groove to, oneness with nature within us and without, consciousness expansion, healing power, solar solutions, keys to our troubled world's survival and to ours begins with us. And the next 250 begins a story that can lead to disaster or to glory. Will we be happy in our city's mature years? Will we get beyond our lingering, limiting fears? For fear is at the root of hate, a poison 
to individual and collective fate. And we have certain obligations to current and future generations. Can we, in Can we invest minds and money with wisdom and sanity to support what's best for our common humanity? Can we provide all kids good education so some won't be mired in stagnation? and instead can rise above their station and add their great gifts to a great nation. It's time for this and other conversations. Will we be known as a city of the gun or as one that nurtures life like the sun? Will we leave as testament a clean, pristine environment and can we relate to the other as a sister or a brother, as children of God and the great earth mother? Black, white, brown, yellow, red, what matters is what's in your heart and head. Homophobia, racism, sexism, these all need to be ex-isms. What we need is to talk. We're all human beings. Together we can accomplish great things. Soul to soul and heart to heart is the best and only place to start. As in the East they say Namaste and Savati, the God in you honors the God in me. And as mystics reveal throughout history, the paradoxical, universal mystery's key is unity within diversity. I declare this St. Louis's rebirth day, a time to heal, drive, drive fear away. The first 250 we've made our mark with our smarts and with our arts. The future already marks our deeds, hums to our beat, will sow our seeds. The next 250, more smarts, more arts, and a focus on our hearts. Time for St. Louis truly to become St. Louis. All of us. One polity with mutual R-E-S-P-E-C-T. A unity community, less of me and more of we, to harness the energy of our diversity. When each part is great, the whole is greater. Let St. Louis be the incubator. Our sameness and our variety united creates synergy. Open heart, open mind, fulfill the ends of humankind. One with nature, one with each other, we fulfill ourselves what we are here for, fully human, free of stress, each a distinct wave in the river's dynamic oneness. And each late wave is a living river, a river flowing toward an infinite sea, all of our ultimate destiny. But now our finite stay on earth is when we have to prove our worth. Let us be reborn, renewed, and move forward this rebirth day. And let our smarts, arts, and hearts lead us on our way. Thank you.
I tell you what, that's food for the soul. That was, that was amazing. It was amazing. It's what our city and our nation needs right now. That's the kind of medicine we need. Boy, you, you knocked that out of the park. Well, Michael, we have a couple other things to do. Uh, we have someone here that's going to play a song. Um, I don't know if they're in the audience, um, but if they can start making their way up, up here, that'll be great. They're, you good? You good? And then we need, um, you want the young, young lady? Okay. Come on up, Aaron. And I also have Alderwoman Lida Crewson with us. Let's give Alderwoman Crewson a big round of applause. Come on up. Alderwoman Crewson was very instrumental also in helping make sure we had the first poet laureate for our region. So let's give her a Alderman Ogilvy is here also. Could you please join us up here? And uh, uh, Ms. Dejour Blackman, could you make your way up here? I need you. Uh, our young poet. Our young poet. And Jill McGuire. A lot of people. Michael? First poet laureate, the city of St. Louis, <laughs> the region. We have a medal. We have a medal we want to present you with uh, from the city of St. Louis residents and, and people all across the region, in honor of being the first poet laureate in our region and marking this 250th rebirth of the city of St. Louis in our region. Please present them with the medal. All the way to Thank you, President Reed. Um, poet Laureate, Michael Castro. Is that how you address the Poet Laureate? It's a long name, but thank you so much. I, I for one, found your words to be incredibly inspiring, and I, I was looking out at the audience, and I think everybody did, so thank you so much, and thank you for serving in this, in this first role. We appreciate it. Thank you. President Reed. Are we all done with the photos? We can't be putting that on there. Okay. And now we have a uh, special treat for Michael Castro. Hey, bonjour. But the way we got Makwa, Makwa, or them, they're saying the dude's bar. Honey, bonjour. But the way we got Makwa, Makwa, or them, they're saying the dude's bar. Chibi Gwich, Michael. Chibi Gwich, Kijam the door, Mira Gijigat. Wawanen, Wabanung, Jawanung, Hep Gijmok, Giway Nong. What I had just said in my language is my name is. It means thunder bear in our language. What it's talking about is when that thunder is coming, we see that flash of lightning and we're waiting for that sound to come. It means there's a big noise coming. And with it is bringing that medicine and that healing. Um, I was asked to come here and, and, and perform for Michael and, and I was wondering what kind of person he is. You know, I, I, I knew who he was, but I didn't know who he really was. And then as we're up here um, honoring Michael, he goes around the room and honors everybody else. Uh, truly a great person. Uh, I want to, and when I heard somebody say the word medicine up here, I want to tell you a story. In Indian country, you cannot get away without hearing a story. And uh, the story is about medicine. A way, way, ja, a long time ago, the creator and all the animals were gathered around. And the creator said, I'm going to bring human beings to Mama Aki, our Mother Earth. However, we're worried about what's going to happen to the medicines. Are they going to abuse it? How are we going to protect it from them? And Gigok, a fish, popped his head out of the water and he says, give it to me, I'll put it in the bottom of the ocean. And they all thought for a while, no, they'll go there and find it. Migize, the eagle, 
to give it to me, I'll put it on the highest mountain. And they thought about it for a while and they said, no, they'll find it there too. So the Comus, our mother moon, said, give it to me. Put it behind me. I'll shelter it behind me. They'll never find it here. And they thought about it for a while and they said, no. So the Bear Clan spoke up. And the Bear Clan is the protector of all the medicines of our people. And he says, I know where. He said, put it in our hearts. Nobody can touch it from there. And when I listen to our poets speak, it's medicine coming from their hearts. And that's what I think about when I listen to you, Michael. Chi mm -hmm. And I'd like to send you an honor song. Um, I am from the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians. I am Ojibwe. Along with my director, Dr. Molly Tovar, we represent about 28 Native American students represented at the George Warren Brown of Social Work at WashU. And uh, the Booter Center would look for me and like to say thank you for your contributions to, to the Native American community here in St. Louis and abroad. And it's great to have a connection um, between uh, uh, Michael, I almost call you Dr. Castro again, uh, <laughs> Michael and um, personal relationship with Joya Harjo and Carter, our elder, celebrated elder of the Booter Center. So, Mado, thank you. Jill McGuire, I know a lot of you probably know Jill. Come on up, Jill. Jill wants to have a couple words and from the Regional Arts Commission and things that she does all over the city of St. Louis and to honor the first poet, Lily. Thank you. I will be very brief. It's amazing to see all of you here today and I was, it was a, a privilege to be on the first selection committee for our very first poet laureate, a long time coming, but I guess a really good way to start our rebirth after 250. And I loved Michael's poem and I said, when are you going to publish it? And he said, soon we will have copies of it. And I just think it's amazing. I congratulate you, Michael, and all of the poets and all of the spoken word people out there. Let's keep this alive, let's grow it and keep it going. Anne, <laughs> who has been a um, longtime supporter 
and I just want to say congratulations. Now, now we want to invite up uh, all the poets.